The Adventure to Anywhere Shadowhunters series is dedicated to bringing you haunted tales of the paranormal. When a friend began sharing some spooky tales of Hawaii, we just couldn't pass up an opportunity to share those stories with you. Due to the current state of things and certain financial restraints, we couldn't exactly travel to these wondrous islands ourselves. So I reached out to a current resident of Hawaii and our latest recruit to the Adventure to Anywhere team. Aloha everyone, my name is Brad and this is me cruising around on my beat up motorcycle. But today I'm super excited because my good friends over at Adventure to Anywhere have asked me to share some stories about where I live, which is Honolulu, Hawaii on the gorgeous island of Oahu. Now, when most people think of Hawaii, they think of the clear blue waters, the gorgeous beaches, the giant waves for surfing, palm trees, mountains out of movies like Jurassic Park, and great resorts and shopping, among other things. But the question I want to pose today is, with all that beauty, warmth, and the Hawaiian skies and sun, is there a darker side to Hawaii? <laughs> so yeah, today we're going to be talking ghost stories in Hawaii. And I want to share with you a couple personal experiences that I've had, as well as one more famous haunting and ghost story here on Oahu. Now, before I get started, I want to say that although I have lived in Hawaii many years, I was not born here, nor am I native Hawaiian, but I have been blessed to have been welcomed by the wonderful Aloha spirit you find here. And many have made me part of their Ohana, which is the Hawaiian word for family. And for that, I am truly blessed and I can never repay such a debt but what it does demand from me is that i handle everything that i share with you today about hawaii with a high degree of integrity and respect we want to let you know that we really um, respect the culture and history of hawaii and the people there so where are some of the more haunted areas on the island of oahu well if you were to ask some locals or even a local news station you might hear one area frequently repeated and indeed a quick internet search reveals that it often ranks quite high on lists of the top most haunted areas on the island of Oahu. So what is that area? It's the 16th Avenue Bridge in Kaimuki. So I've come to the bridge today to check it out. And it can be quite distracting at first because of all the noise from the freeway that runs below it. Local legend has it that some years ago, and from what I can gather it was at least 15 or 20 years ago, a small Japanese girl was killed here when she was involved in a hit-and-run accident. After that terrible accident happened, people began reporting that a small Japanese little girl about the age of five would approach them when they were crossing the bridge in the evening, and she would take their hand and ask them to help her find her way home. When they crossed the bridge and looked down, she would be gone. I also recently saw an interview with a man who runs group tours across this bridge. And he reported that once he had a group here crossing the bridge and a young man was filming the group from behind. He was startled to find when he got to the other side of the bridge that when he was looking at the footage, he could see a small, very pale faced little Japanese girl peeking in and out of the people crossing the bridge. So I've returned here to the bridge at night so that you can get a feel what it might be like to cross this bridge in the evening. Let's take a stroll across. So I have crossed the bridge and made my return back without incident. So I guess I won't be being accompanied tonight by the little girl, which is okay with me. So the 16th Avenue Bridge in Kaimuki is one of the more well-known ghost stories here on Oahu, and it was fun checking it out. This is 
an Indian banyan tree. Now, Indian banyan trees are not native to Hawaii, and I think they were introduced around the late 1800s, but they are found throughout the Hawaiian Islands, and they definitely make up part of the Hawaiian scenery. They're very loved. In fact, they have a very interesting look. It is actually kind of located right behind Honolulu Community College. Uh, this is the back of Honolulu Community College. And then th in front of it is actually an elementary school, and this is the back of the elementary school. And the elementary school is the Princess Victoria Kaialani Elementary School. And actually the school is named in her honor. Now she was born in, I think, 1875, and she grew up in the Waikiki area. Um, she grew up on an estate, and that, there at her estate she had some pet animals, uh, including peacocks, which she used, she used to like to feed underneath her banyan tree. She was actually the heir apparent to the throne of Hawaii and was to inherit the throne from her aunt, Queen Lydia Lili Uokalani, but unfortunately would never see this happen. At the age of 11, her mother passed away, and she was soon after, a couple years later, sent to London to complete her education. While there, she learned of the illegal overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom and traveled from London to Washington to plead that the Hawaiian monarchy and sovereignty be returned to Hawaii. Unfortunately, she was not successful. At the age of 23, she passed away. It's said that her peacocks when she died cried out um, and this school was built later that year well was open later that year and her father donated a branch of her banyan tree which they planted and grew into this tree here today so my experience here and again i knew none of this history is i would come out here on pretty warm nights and late at night when i couldn't sleep and, and sometimes i was just feeling the stress and maybe that negative energy that others talked about. And I just wanted to get away and be closer to nature. So unfortunately, like there is not a lot of nature around and what is here is kind of fenced off. And this was the closest I could get. So I'd come out here and I would sit right here, uh, sort of on that very small piece of cement. And I would just stare at this tree at night, the moonlight lighting it um, and the wind blowing uh, through its branches, it was quite relaxing. And sometimes I would close my eyes, I guess maybe meditatively, or just to rest my eyes uh, and listen to the wind. So I did that on several occasions. And on one particular occasion, I was sitting here when the wind was blowing very strongly and it was moving everything, it was moving from the right to the left and the wind was very strong as you can see the leaves that are caught on the fence over here um, many of them would be out here in the streets uh, and most of the leaves were shuffling this way um, i heard steps coming through and i thought perhaps that's somebody was passing through and i looked up and i didn't see anything the odd thing is is that it was coming from my left side um, moving to the right so it was moving against the wind and when I actually looked again I saw that there appeared to be leaves brushing forward as, as if someone was kicking them from the left foot then a right foot um, brushing forward now the wind can do crazy things and maybe it bounced off a building and under turned on itself and came back under but it was really odd that uh, the leaves seem to take turns from the left side of this path to the right side of this path moving forward and it felt as if somebody was shuffling their feet but I didn't feel any fear I didn't feel any threat to myself it was eerie um, nonetheless but it did stop and I kind of relaxed after some time and closed my eyes again to uh, take in the nature uh, the winds kind of picked up and these large vines as you see them floating down there were some that there were much more than they hadn't grafted into the ground and i think they've done some trimming on the tree since but the wind was blowing them and they were reaching out 
uh, well, that's the term I would use. They were stretching out across the fence, almost as if they were reaching towards me. And as you can see, some of them are quite long. They definitely cleared the fence and were blowing into this area um, in front of me. Um, it was kind of eerie. <laughs> and I don't know if it was that experience or what, but at that moment I felt like there was, so, I was not alone, like I was in the presence of somebody else. And that person felt very old from a time long ago, um, not from our modern period. Uh, this is the feeling I had. Now again, it could just be these magnificent trees, they look ancient to begin with, and these ancient vines that look like ancient vines reaching out to me could cause that kind of feeling. But the interesting thing was that there was a plastic bag floating by from the right to the left. And then it kind of circled in the air, almost suspended for a moment. And I said, if there's someone here and they want to interact with me, could you please move the bag and maybe put it in my hand? So I outstretched my hand in front of myself like this and the bag was off in that direction. And, certain, and sure enough, the bag blew up and passed me against the wind, or it seemed to be against the wind. Um, it blew up and over into this direction, and I put my hand out, and it just came down so gently and landed right in the palm of my hand. Oddly, the birds just stopped. I don't know if you noticed this, but it's dead silent. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. There was a creak in the tree. Now, some people say that banyan trees are collectors of lost souls, and they certainly can at night appear very creepy um, and dark with all the crevices and twisting vines and trunks. They are gorgeous trees, and they definitely part of, play a part of the history here in Hawaii and the culture, and most certainly part of the beauty. So if you ever get a chance, check out a banyan tree and say hello. It's no mystery that the Hawaiian Islands are a beautiful place to visit, or even live. But all too often, its rich history is overshadowed by its tourist attractions. If a visit to this incredible location is on your itinerary, make sure to respect the native culture. And if you're granted the opportunity, ask the locals about some of the stories that have been passed down from generation to generation.